Uh, okay, let's do a movie. What is out and interesting? High and Low, John Galliano, which is a documentary by Kevin MacDonald, who won the best doc Oscar for One Day in September back in 1999. Other credits include Last King of Scotland, Marley, which I talked about in relation to One Love, the dramatization of the Bob Marley story recently, and the 2018 uh, Whitney doc. So this is the the true story of, oh, it's a documentary, of course it's a true story, of the rise and fall, and I suppose rise again, of the British fashion designer, takes its title from John Galliano's ability that we hear about in an interview to meld high and low culture. As one interviewer says, the thing he could do was he could take stuff from anywhere, like a kind of magpie thing and put them together. But it's also clearly a reference to his personality and his career, the highs and lows of both. We start at arguably the lowest point which people may have seen, it is a news, it was a, a, a video that went viral of Galliano in a bar in France, uh, winter 2010, 2011, apparently drunk, telling somebody off camera that he likes Hitler and that under Hitler they wouldn't be there because they and their parents and their ancestors would have been effing you know, it's, I mean, it's appalling. It's yeah. absolutely appalling. <laughs> End of career time. End of career time. It did indeed uh, turn out that it was not unique. There had been other such racist outbursts bursts in the same period. And in fact, there's one point when, when they addressed the, the 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 incident, and he remembers there being only one incident, but there were at least two. So he was arrested, he was charged, um, and he was fired as creative director at Dior because everyone just went, no, absolutely not. So at the beginning of the documentary, we hear. Uh, Kevin McDonald asking a now sober and clearly sort of, you know, clean uh, Galliano how he could have said such a thing. And he says, well, I'll tell you the whole story. I'll tell you everything. And then the documentary then proceeds to tell his entire story. Here is a clip. This is from later in the documentary when he goes back to revisit um, his past after having become rehabilitated in the wake of having torched his entire career. Have a look at this. But first, would you, would you like to see the, the garments and, and yes, just in? You can, this can is the it. one that pushed me over the edge. Let's see how. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's the last one, isn't it? <laughs> My heart's going really fast. Yeah, yeah. Look at the shading through the pockets, fab, isn't it? And when they're hung like that, that's done it. So that's him sort of going back and looking at some of the creations he made before his career went spectacularly mm -hmm. uh, off the rails. So the story is sold through a mix of uh, interview and archive. It covers his childhood, which is Streatham via Gibraltar. Wow. So actually, when you say, sort of, you know, British, well, actually, his heritage um, is, is elsewhere. His relationship with a clearly abusive father, his early realisation that he was gay, his acceptance at St Martin's, the buzz created by his graduation show. There's lots of grainy footage of the early shows, which is all kind of theatrical madness and vim and vigour. And, and I don't know anything about fashion, but even I'm looking at these shows thinking, OK, there's something going on there because it's like it's it's, it's almost kind of like a like a punky, new romantic aesthetic to it. We hear from a financier earlier on saying he wasn't interested in money at all. He was only interested in clothes. In fact, he was impossible to work with because we say these clothes are unwearable and nobody can make them. And he, and he says, I don't care, I don't care. Okay, this is what I'm doing. The next thing is he gets picked up by the grand fashion houses, moves into haute couture. Then he's doing umpteen shows a year, as well as overseeing a range of perfumes, of handbags, of sunglasses, of shoes, of kids' ranges. It's all clearly fueled by alcohol and, and, and you know and, and uppers. And there's a there's a there's a kind of thing about the, the pacing of the film. You know that scene in Goodfellas when the cooking and everything's going completely mad. It's almost like watching it's almost like watching cocaine on film. Like you imagine this is what it would feel like. And the pace of the documentary has this kind of cumulative something's going to come you know the wheels are definitely going to come off we hear from Anna Wintour Kate Moss Naomi Campbell they talk about his brilliance we hear from the Dior boss uh, Sidney Toledano about that at one point they went to him and said look we will give you six months off because the you, you're going off the rails he doesn't remember that happening at all we see him doing fashion shows a day after his father's died and the, his, father's, his father's funeral and then we see the meltdown and it's not just that video but it's 
there is an account given by one of his victims who they they um they interview of his racist outburst and this person has clearly lived in the shadow of this outburst because they were just somebody who a celebrity decided to attack in public and because of the way that the you know, media thing works they never you know never really apparently got over it they complain uh, well i think rightly so say that i was that they were never apologized to uh, galliano himself says he th- thinks that he apologized in court. He said, oh, yeah, we made eye contact. And I said I was sorry, but it's not really. And then the latter half of the film is about the nature of apology and about how Galliano ended up being uh, taken under the wing of a Holocaust educator, somebody who said, look, he says he did something wrong. He didn't know why he did it. I will educate him about the Holocaust. And there's a lot of stuff about whether the Anti-Defamation League thought that he was, you know, somebody who could be rehabilitated and whether he should be. And and then it becomes about the nature of apology and the nature of putting right something that you've done wrong. There are those who think he learned his lesson, those who think he didn't quite shortly after his rehabilitation had happened. He was seen in New York wearing a costume that appeared to be either inspired by or mocking Hasidic dress. And somebody in the thing says, yeah, well, he clearly didn't learn as much as as he should have learned. So he comes out of it as an incredibly frustrating and, uh, and um, you know, divisive character. And, and there's a lot in the documentary about the fashion world's very ambiguous attitude to at what point do we censure people? How much do we give them reign to be sort of crazy free thinking spirits and at what point do we finally go no sorry you can't do this anymore but the thing is that kevin mcdonald is a smart enough filmmaker to put all this stuff out there in a way which is very accessible i didn't know this story at all because i don't know anything about fashion but without telling us how to feel about or how to judge this character go there we are here's the stuff you decide how you judge i think that you know there's there are parallels made with alexander mcqueen about whom there was a very good documentary a while ago but the main story is one of addiction it's one of burnout it's one of what happens when you know, the high life will inevitably lead to a very low point. And it's a it's a cautionary tale. And I think it allows you to be the judge of its subject and for you to decide whether or not you you buy the, you know, the the, the changed character, whether or not you think the rehabilitation is fine, whether you think it's it, it isn't. I think the great strength of the documentary is that Kevin but I here's what I think. I think if John Galliano watched the documentary, and I don't know whether he has, I'm sure he has, but I think he would feel that he was adequately represented, that he wasn't treated unfairly. Does by he the accept filmmaker. that he was a racist? He, what he accepts <clears throat> is that what he said was absolutely terrible and unforgivable. But you but, don't say that if you're not at heart a racist. Okay, so there is a very interesting discussion about in vino veritas, right? Somebody says in vino veritas, you you in when you're drunk, you say the true thing, uh, yeah. and then somebody else says no, in vino disgust. He says what actually happens is when people are drunk, they don't say the truth. What they say is the most poisonous things possible. And there is a lot of discussion about why it should be that that anti-Semitism was part of this, you know, where that came from. Why was it that this was, that, that this was part of the, of the vocabulary? And there is a, again, I think the the film doesn't give you an answer. What it does is it it talks about exactly the question that you wanted to hear answered. And that's, you know, hats off to Kevin McDonald for knowing if somebody saw this story, they would want to know exactly that. And it does not so- solve or answer that question. What it does is it puts all the evidence on the thing and says, you decide. And I, you know, I I felt all the way through, I'm very conflicted. I don't know what I think about this. I, I really genuinely don't because, you know, because, because, well, for one thing, I've never been that drunk. So I... Yeah, but I, I think if, even if you were that drunk and you'd been taking uppers, you, you wouldn't don't say, think, no. you don't suddenly become an anti-Semite just because you've been taking drugs. I, I tend to agree with you. Yeah. I tend yeah, I tend to agree with you. But the question is why he said what he, and, it, and there is, the film the, the, does absolutely head on answer. Why would you, why would you say that? Why that of all things? Maybe it's because in the culture, the default insult, I mean, we live in a culture in which anti-Semitism is rife. Maybe it's just, you know, actually one of the interviews said it's just stuff that he'd heard. If he wanted to be offensive, he just, that's what he said, you know. I mean, okay. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm not, what cinematic I'm saying is, release, though. Yes. And, okay. and, and I think a very, very good piece of work about a subject that I knew nothing about at all.